Hi, my name is Jerry and I am a backflow preventer technician. I am certified to test and repair backflow valve preventer assemblies. There are three backflow valves here. All are used for different purposes. This valve is an RPZ, reduced pressure zone assembly. And this can be used on all kinds of system. This is the main workhorse of backflow valves, this kind of a valve. This one here is a double check valve assembly and it cannot be used in high hazard areas like a sprinkler system. This one is called a PVB pressure vacuum breaker and it can be used in many kinds of systems including sprinklers. What's inside of this thing? This is a check valve, this is a check valve, this is a relief valve and there's a hole here for where when this fails or if it is doing what it's supposed to happen when say pressure fluctuations occur, water will dump out of here on purpose. The valve is set up to close down, but yet open up the interior of it to let all the water out so that the bad water cannot come back out and go back into the drinking water system and contaminate it. It will let air go there instead. Now, what is inside here? Inside of this assembly, in, in this part of this, is what's called a poppet. It's one of these. This is a disc and it has a, a seal material here, it's soft. And this rides with a spring on it up and down through here. And there is a cap that sits on top here that holds it together. Just like this. This particular one is identical. You could in interchange these. So this goes on here, this goes like this. And as the water goes by, it lifts this up. And then when the water stops, it makes a seal and closes. This one here, check valve one, has a five pound spring, harder to squeeze. The one that's in here has a one pound spring. It's not as hard to squeeze. Inside the relief valve a section here is a diaphragm like you see sticking out here. There is a component inside here that's not too much different than this, than a poppet, in that it has a small disc on the other side, but it's a smaller one like this. And every time this uh, diaphragm moves, the part moves with it and makes a seal against a seat that's on the inside here. And this little O-ring sits, this plastic piece that's in the middle here uh, has an O-ring that sits on it and that's what this one's for. And there's a spring in here that keeps this open or closed. Uh, when the pressure's on it, it collapses it, lets it make it seal and vice versa. You always use a lube on all your O-rings, you never use lube on uh, these discs. You l use lube on this O-ring. And if you can read that, it says super lube. Well, that's a food grade lubricant. I buy it in a big can. Uh, <clears throat> you could actually eat this, although I wouldn't recommend it with dinner. But it is something that can contact the potable water system and not contaminate it where regular grease or oil would do that. So you only use things like this. And these come when you buy parts. They'll often come with this little tube. I just buy them in a bigger one. Inside here, the double check valve is a same one pound spring that was in this and a poppet and inside there there's a plastic surface in there called a seat and that's what pushes against this soft material 
and makes a seal. There's actually a ridge on there. I don't know if you can see it too well. This goes in, this goes in, and the cap goes on it. <clears throat> and over time, sometimes those discs or rubber surfaces start to deteriorate. And this comes from a different kind of a backflow valve, but you see the white ring there? That's from being ground where it touched the surface that was there. And you can still see the little sand particles and this doesn't hold its pressure anymore. These do the same thing and they need to be replaced. So there's one here in this, there's one here, identical. This is called a PVB, a pressure vacuum breaker. And this particular one is out of service. It's got a crack here in the ball valve. You could replace this ball valve. I just never have. Uh, I don't really understand how this happened. Uh, I'm in Florida and it looks like it was frozen, expanded and broke the, the metal, which is brass, which is soft, but we don't really freeze here. So I don't understand that. But at some point in the past, I replaced this for a customer. And inside here is a seat similar. And these components go inside. First, there's this, which makes a seal up against here. And this rides in the water up and down. Then this goes on. And then when you turn on the water, this comes up and pushes up against here and makes a seal. What keeps this straight is it goes inside this little pin and it rides up and down the right place. So to work on this, you take the screws off, take this off, and then you take this, put a screwdriver across the, the parts that, that you screw in and you turn it to release it and then you unscrew it and take the cap off. Then it would look like this. You take this off and you pull that out. And sometimes you have to replace this thing. <clears throat> sometimes this thing breaks the plastic and they need to be replaced. Sometimes it's just got debris in there and it's filthy. You just need to really clean these. Cleanliness is what really helps with the backflow valve. The surfaces and the seals, the discs, are very much bothered by dirt, debris, stones. Yes, stones make it through our water system and sometimes you open it up and there are stones in there. Now, this particular set of parts goes to a different brand or different model of pressure vacuum breaker uh, like this one, or this one. This one goes to a whole different brand. This is a Watts 800 M4. And this is another Wilkins. But this disc, this will, you pull this out, and this will sometimes tear. That's actually what happened with this one. This one naturally sits on a much bigger backflow valve, a two inch one. And so it wore out, started to fail, and I take that out. When these fail, what happens? On a pressure vacuum breaker, the water comes out up here. Of course, this is screwed on. And the water shoots out underneath this lid and just starts pouring all over the place. So you know there's something wrong. On this one, the water starts to shoot out the relief valve or the vent that this is called, and water pours out, you know there's a problem. This one fails, and you have no idea why it's failed, or that it has failed. The only way that you can know is by testing it with a meter that you use for testing backflow valves. Once they fail, and you need to fix them, where do you get all these parts? You can't go to Walmart. They're not in aisle four. You cannot get them anyplace. You go to a company 
similar to this. Backflow preventer parts. And there's giant catalogs with all the different kinds and brands and models. And you order the parts and they come to you. And that's how you do this. At least this gives you an overview of what they are and what they're for. I gave you an overview of what all the valves are, what's inside of them, and kind of what they're used for. How do you finally test them? Because it has to be tested by code. It used to be once a year in a residential. Now it's every two years, at least in this area. But in a commercial application, these still need to be tested annually once a year. You wind up calling somebody to have these tested. Someone like used to be me, and I come to your location with a, a meter like this. This is called a differential pressure gauge. And this one happens to be made by a company called Midwest. It's an 830. And this one has been, or this model has been around since they started testing backflow valves. This is the workhorse of backflow valve testing. It comes in a case. It doesn't get damaged. You can seal it back up again. You can even pull this little button and take the lid off. And you can actually travel to where the backflow valve is and do the test. You just gotta be careful because now part of it is exposed. But many other backflow valve test kits are completely exposed and easy to damage. This one, not so much. What is in here? So there are three hoses. The green hose is the low pressure. The red hose is the high pressure. And then uh, the third hose is for, I'll show you. And there is a drain tube, just a clear plastic tube, because in order to get air out of this system, you use this and it, this is how it drains. There is uh, valves here, high pressure, the vent, low pressure, high bleed, low bleed, and this actually tells me line pressure on the water line coming to the backflow valve. And naturally, here is my readings that I take. Again, this is a differential pressure gauge. Well, I hope that you learned something from my videos. I did one in the past about extensively how to repair an RPZ. Uh, this video is kind of an overview. And now I'm working on another video of how to actually do the testing how the meter works, how the connections are, and how a valve looks when it's being tested. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the corner right there, you can push that button and subscribe. Or below, there's a bell. You can push that, get noticed when I put out another video. You can give me a thumbs up or share this with a friend. And if you put questions and comments below, I try to look at those and answer those whenever I can. Thanks for watching. Bye now.